Hi everyone and welcome back to another video for Lawn Fawn. This is Mindy Egan and in today's video I am going to show you how I made this really fun birthday shaker card. The first thing I want to show you is kind of my initial process for this card. I don't normally do this, but there were quite a few elements on here and I wanted to kind of get the placement of everything, make sure it was going to all fit. So I placed all the stamp images down that I wanted to use and then I am going to take a picture with my phone. I oftentimes forget where I wanted things. So, I mean, it does change a little bit just depending on the amount of space I have, but at least I have that general idea saved. Now I'm going to take all of those images and place them on some Lawn Fawn 80 pound white cardstock. And I am taking my hand and just going over all of those to kind of remove any residue that might be on there from the manufacturer. That just helps give me a better impression of the stamped images, especially since some of them I haven't used yet. So the stamps that I'm using for this is loads of fun, which is the washing machine and the elements that go with that. I'm using bubbles of joy, which has some of those bubbles and the mouse that kind of looks like it's going to be riding on a bubble. I also used a mouse from crazy antics and then a virtual friends, which is this little guy I'm coloring right here. Actually, he um, just kind of has his hand waving in the air there. Now, since I stamped everything in jet black ink, that is a Copic friendly ink from Lawn Fawn. I can color everything in my Copic markers. I will have all of the colors listed at the top of the screen for you for reference. For the mice, I am using some E40s. So I have E44, 43, and 42, and I'm just kind of adding a shadow just to where I think the light source would be hitting last on the critters. So for instance, this mouse is facing to the right, so my darkest area will be on the left. And then I'm just bringing in an R01 for the ears and the little nose and maybe a little speck for the cheeks. Now I have my little detergent box that I colored in some oranges. My bubbles, I am using the BG000 and quadruple zero, so just some really, really light blues. And then I'm going to move on to the shirt, which is, I don't know why, but some reason the hardest one for me to color. I used a YG1706 and 01. And then I'm going to move on to some of the other garments in the washing machine. And I have just some cool grays for the sock. And I did some little pink undies here. I just wanted to mix up the colors. And I'm also going to use that same color family for the towels. So our 85, 83, and 81. I did uh, BG 49, 13, and 32. And then I had a Y 19, 15, and 11 for the other set of towels. Then for the washing machine, I'm just using some cool grays once again, C3, C2, and C0. And I'm just kind of blending out, fading off into the white of the paper. I didn't want to focus too much on the coloring of the washing machine, and I didn't even color that uh, center circle of it. And then just some neutral grays for the rest of the washing machine. Then I'll take all of the coordinating dies for each of these images, line them up, and hold them in place with some low tack tape, and run these through my die cut machine, and then I can work on the background for my card. I'll be using the brick stencil with some pencil eraser cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now my brick stencil, I had previously used some pixie spray, which is just a low tack uh, spray adhesive that doesn't rip your paper. So mine was still a little tacky, which helps with these really thin stencils, but also using the Make Art Station really helps kind of hold that down as well. And then I'm gonna be coming in with a blending brush and the cranberry ink. I'm not pushing too hard because of the fact that that brick stencil is very delicate. I didn't want it to shift around on me, but I'm also going in kind of soft because I don't need this to be completely covered. I kind of like the look of it being scattered where it's darker in some areas and lighter in others. So after I have that all ink blended, I can remove my stencil and I'll wash that off in the sink later on. And I'm gonna trim this background out using one of the stitched rectangle dies. I'll line that up over my background, run that through the die cut machine. And I'm also going to use that same size stitched rectangle die cut from wood grain cardstock. Now I wanted to kind of make a wood floor for my background. So I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of this. I 
don't have the exact measurement because I was just really eyeballing it. So maybe inch and a half, couple inches, maybe whatever looks best to you. And then I'm going to save that because I don't know why, but that this color wood grain cardstock is like gold to me. I do not waste a single sheet of this. So the way I'm doing my shaker for this card is probably a little different than I've seen others do it in previous videos. I used one of the circle stackables and just die cut out the center of my washing machine completely. Um, I've seen some where they left kind of that glare line in there that's from the stamp, but I just die cut that out completely. It gave me a larger area for shaker bits to move around in. I also used that coordinating die of the washing machine and just die cut it from white cardstock. That's going to be my backer piece. And I'm throwing on a little bit of tumble glass distress oxide ink. So that's going to kind of look like my soapy water background. Then I can go ahead and add my garments to my washing machine. So I have some kind of tucked underneath. So it looks like it's just you're only seeing part of it. And I'm just adding that to that background with my liquid glue. And then off screen, I did trim down a piece of acetate that is going to fit right inside of my shaker window I kind of cut some of the bottom pieces at an angle so it fit right inside of there and then I'm lining that back of the piece with liquid glue and I'm going to place my acetate on top so that is the front part of my shaker card now you probably noticed that the lines on the side are pretty thin so a really nice trick that I have for this is I'm going to take foam tape and I folded it over on itself. I need two layers of foam tape for this to be able to have enough room for my shaker bits to move around. And then I trimmed a very thin piece off and I'm removing the backing on both sides. This allows me to be able to maneuver my foam tape around in that circle. There are lots of different ways that you can create a well for your shaker bits, but this is the way that I like to do it. And I cut it just thin enough that it fits in between those small areas. Now I did come up a little bit short, so I trimmed off another small piece. I'm going to remove the backing on both sides of that once again, and I'm going to line that up right next to where I ended, and I'm going to come up right to the starting point. You want to make sure, especially with a shaker card, that you don't have any gaps because you don't want your shaker elements to fall out. I also added a couple of the smaller pieces I just trimmed down to kind of fill in the rest of that washing machine back there so it's it's nice and balanced and now I'm carefully adding in some shaker bits you can use whatever you want here whether it's um, you know sequence mix or I can't even remember what these are these are just some little like icicle crystals I'm not honestly sure it's just something I found in my stash and I'm being very careful because we have exposed adhesive here so we don't want it to stick and then leave gaps in our shaker so once I have that placed and I made sure everything is flat I don't have any on top of each other I can remove the backing of that foam tape and then I'm going to place that backer piece right on top and this is just the cutest little thing to have this washing machine all on its own be the shaker element so once I turn that over I pressed everything down really nice so it's all adhered really well and I can give this a shake and so these little crystals to me look like little bubbles in your washing machine. Now I can start kind of putting together some of my cards. So I did go ahead and attach my uh, wood floor to the bottom and I'm just putting together pieces that I know are not going to interfere with the sentiment because I still need to add a sentiment to this. So for instance, I have that laundry basket with that cute little mouse poking up on top those I could attach right away. And a lot of this is getting attached to the washing machine itself, which I will do with a little bit of liquid glue. And I did add a little piece of foam tape to the edge of that basket so that it kind of evens out a little bit and is all flush with each other. So my detergent can go on top, my other mouse can go on top, anything I can add that is not going to obstruct me adding a sentiment, I'm putting that on right now. And I'm mainly doing that because I need to know how much room I have left for my sentiment. A lot of times I don't leave myself enough room. So here I have a sentiment off of the Loads of Fun stamp set. And I'm using one of the pieces out of my Misty Corners to help make sure that that is aligned straight on my background. And then I'm going to prep this with an anti-static powder tool. You could always sprinkle on some embossing powder to kind of test it out because we did ink blend on this. So your background may still be wet. So after I prep that with the anti-static powder tool, 
I'm inking this first part of the sentiment up in the Yeti ink, which is a white pigment ink. It's great for heat embossing with white embossing powder because it does stay sticky a little longer. And then I can sprinkle on that white embossing powder and tap off any of the excess. I'll make sure my heat gun is really nice and hot and I can come in and melt that embossing powder. After this is all melted and I let it sit for about a minute and cool off, I'm going to just brush over it with a Swiffer cloth and that's gonna help just take away any excess powder that is on my background because I still need to stamp one more piece of the sentiment. I was just more confident doing this in two steps versus trying to stamp it all at once. So I have this really fun scripty sentiment here that says loads of fun. Lined that up once again underneath my first sentiment prepped that with that anti-static powder tool and once again I'm going to ink this up in that Yeti pigment ink. I really love how this white just pops off of that red background. I think that just really kind of adds to the character of the card. So once again after I sprinkled on the embossing powder and heat set that let that cool off kind of brushed off any excess powder, I can start working on actually putting my card together. So I'm going to have a storm cloud card base that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have another piece of white cardstock here that is just a little bit bigger than my actual card panel that has that brick wall on it. I really liked having that white kind of border around it and then that dark background. So I'm just applying that tape runner to the back of all of it. I don't really need to add any more dimension because my shaker card, I think, has enough dimension. And I did at first start by putting adhesive on the back, the tape runner, but I didn't think that was going to stick good enough with the shaker. So I did go ahead and add the liquid glue to the back of that, kind of held that down for a minute or two and made sure that was really adhered down to the cardstock nice. And then I just need to add this cute little mouse that's riding on a bubble. I had another little set of bubbles, but I just didn't think it quite fit in. I thought it was getting just a little bit too busy. And now I have my shaker card completely done. I love those. I love having this as a shaker card. I think it's super fun that it looks like bubbles kind of floating around in there. And it's a great birthday card. So there we have it. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found this card and video inspiring. Thanks again, and I'll see you again soon.